Question number eight. This question is actually based on the topic two functions. So if you see here, we have a function f and g, and f of x is equal to natural log 2x minus 7, where x is greater than uh, 7 over 2. g of x is equal to 2 natural log x minus natural log d, where x is greater than 0, and the d is all positive real numbers. So question A, we need to state the equation of the vertical asymptote to the graph of the y equals g of x. So it means we need to find the vertical asymptote for the function g of x. So in order to solve this question, uh, we know that g of x is same as 2 times natural log x minus natural log d, right? Natural log at n is same as the log Euler's number and something, right? So in order to solve vertical asymptote for the function g of x, uh, we need to go over one concept with a uh, logarithm. Okay, so let's say we have a logarithm log a bx plus c. To calculate the vertical asymptote, we always have to use what's inside of the bracket here. So to calculate the vertical asymptote, we always have to set the what's inside of the bracket equals to zero and then solve for the x. So in this case, the x value is same as negative c over b. Okay, so question a. Uh, we are, since we are trying to calculate the vertical asymptote to the graph, this one, let's first try to change the natural log to the logarithm format. So g of x is same as 2 log e x minus log e d, right? And then we know that d is real number, so means this part is constant, so we don't need to worry about it. However, if you look at this part here, the x is the one that we have to use to calculate the vertical asymptote. So we have to set x equals 0, and this is the vertical asymptote of the function g of x. Then uh, the, we have another information. The graphs of the f of x and g of x intersect at two distinct points, as you can see in this graph here. Question B, I, we need to show that uh, at the points of the intersection is same as x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals 0. So we know that uh, these two functions intersect at two distinct points. We need, and we need to show that at the points of the intersection is happening x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals 0. So means we need to set f of x equals to g of x, right? And from the information, from the question, we know that f of x is same as natural log 2x minus 7. g of x is same as 2 times natural log x minus natural log d, right? Then uh, we can first simplify these equations, right? So let's first change uh, natural log 2x minus 7 equals to uh, natural log x to the power of 2 using the power rule of the logarithm and minus natural log d. Then using quotient rule, we can simplify the right hand side of the equation again. Then this becomes natural log 2x minus 7 equals natural log x squared over d. Okay, then uh, we have set the left hand side is equal to the right side, then, and also we have a same base logarithm, so means we can take the what's inside out like this, and this is same as 2x minus 7 equals x squared over d, and we can solve this as d2x minus 7d equals x squared by multiplying everything by d, then we get uh, x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals 0. So we have shown that uh, the, at the point of intersection, we have the equation x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals 0. Question BII, hence we need to show that d squared minus 7d uh, is greater than 0. So this is discriminant, right? 
So discriminant is always greater than zero if it has two points, right? And then we know that discriminant formula is the b squared minus 4ac and it should be greater than zero. So using this formula and the, the quadratic equation that we found from the bi, the x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals zero, we're going to show that d squared minus 7d is greater than zero. Okay, so from this quadratic formula, we know that a value is equal to 1, b value is equal to minus 2d, and c value is equal to 7d. So you plug, then we can substitute these uh, values into the formula here. Then we get minus 2d squared minus 4 times 1 times 7d greater than 0. So we get 4d squared minus 28d greater than 0. Then simplifying these coefficients will give us the uh, value of d squared minus 7d greater than 0. So we have shown that uh, d squared minus 7d is greater than 0. Okay. Then question BIII, -I -I, we need to find the range of the possible values of the d. That means we have to use this discriminant from the question BIII to calculate the possible uh, ranges of the values for d. So what we need to do is, let's do the i, i, i here. So we're going to, we know, let's know that d squared minus 7d is greater than 0, right? Then we can factor this one out first. So we can factor the d out from the, these terms. Then we get d times bracket, open bracket, d minus 7, close bracket, greater than 0. That means we can set d as greater than 0 or d minus 7 greater than 0 or uh, d greater than 7, right? Then since the d value is always a positive integer or positive real numbers, so d value greater than 7 is your correct answer. The graph intersects at x equals p and x equals q, where p value is less than q. Okay, so this is another information that is given. So question C, in the case where d is equals to 10, we need to find the value of q minus p and express our answer in the form of the a square root b, where an a and b are positive integers. So we have another information. The graphs intersect at x equals p and x equals q, where p is less than q. So this is another information that is given. So question C, in the case where d is equal to 10, we need to find the value of q minus p, express our answer in the form of a square root b, where a and b are positive integers. So from the question b, i, we know that we have this equation as the equation at the point of intersection, right? So using this equation, x squared minus 2dx plus 7d equals 0. Since we know that d equals 10, we can substitute this value into our equation in this way. And this will give us the value of x squared minus 20x plus 70 equals 0. Then uh, we need to factor this out, but you can see this is not easy equation to factor it. So we're going to use the completing the square method to solve this. So we're going to first separate the first two terms from the remaining. And we're going to take the middle number uh, divided by 2 and square it and add it to the, uh, the other two terms and then do exactly the same thing. But this time we're going to subtract it After this, we're going to take this term out here. Then it will give us the uh, first three terms like this. And we have minus 10 squared plus 70 equals 0. Then this can be simplified into x minus 10 squared minus 100 plus 70 equals 0. Uh, I use the, uh, for this part, 
I'm just going to write it here. But I use the a squared minus 2ab plus b squared equals a minus b formula to simplify it, right? Then I know that I now I have x minus 10 squared minus 30 equals 0. Then I can use this information uh, to solve for the x value. Then we can say uh, x minus 10 squared equals 30. When you square root both sides, we get x minus 10 equals plus minus square root 30. And this is same as x equals plus minus square root 30 plus 10. Okay. Then we have two x values which are x equals 10 plus square root 30, x equals 10 minus square root 30. Okay. Uh, from the question or the extra information that we got, we know that p value is less than q value, right? That means uh, 10 plus uh, square root 30 is your q value, and 10 minus square root 30 is your p value, okay? Uh, then we need to do p minus q, or no, q minus p in order to solve our answer in the form of this a square root b, right? So we do uh, 10 plus square root 30 minus 10 minus square root 30. Then we have 10 uh, minus 10 plus square root 30 plus 30, which is same as 2 square root 30. So we have our final answer in a square root b format. So the answer is 2 square root 30.